watching a dire situation. Today, I am going to be seeing the very hyped Boyhood. Um, so, this is uh, this has been the media, been in the critical eye for a while because so uh, it took uh, 12 years to make, apparently. Uh, just filming a kid growing up from boyhood into an adult, I guess. Um, yeah, a lot of critical praise, a lot of... Uh, Although some of my favorite critics don't like it, Red Letter Media especially. Well, not really just don't like it, just think it's really overhyped, but, um... I don't know. I'm, I'm basically feel that it might be a bit long. It's, uh, 165 minutes as far as I can see. But, you know, I, I have trouble sitting through a Lord of the Rings movie that long. <laughs> So I'm I'm just wondering about this. I hope I hope it's not too tedious about that. It's almost three hours, just so you know. Um, but hey, <laughs> hopefully hopefully it's decent. Hopefully it can keep my attention and and, and yeah and, and and you know what? For once, at least it's one of the movies that isn't biographical. The funny thing is, half of the movies on the Best Picture nomination list are bi biography movies. Even this one, you could technically consider it bi biographical because it's a, it's about um, that kid growing up. But um, the, the f at least four of them are undisputably biographical. That would be American Sniper, Sniper Imitation Game, Selma, and The Fury of Everything. But um, but yeah, I'm just I'm just hoping that this movie uh, isn't doesn't feel its length um, and. Maybe have a good time with it. Who knows? Maybe I'll get invested. Um, until then, bye! And here I am. Well, I'd say the best way to describe this movie is... You know that douchebag in, in college who just sits on, um, sits on a bench all day uh, taking photos and just... <sighs> and turning his nose up at people. Have you ever wanted to basically see this guy's entire life? Well, that's what this movie does for you. But I am being a little harsh. Um, basically, I really did like the first hour of this movie. It was going through his childhood, um, like with his family, with all the problems they went through, and all the good stuff they went through, and you know, I was enjoying it. It didn't have this movie never had much of a plot, but at least at the first part, I was getting a lot of character through. Not much from the main character, but from everyone else, getting a lot of character through. And in fact, the the main character not having that much kind of had a Keanu Reeves effect on it, where you could kind of put yourself in place of him. So it felt like I was reliving my childhood almost, even though my childhood wasn't really like his at all. So that was great. Pretty much once his voice changes, he starts to become he starts becoming really pretentious, and the movie starts to drag. Um, the problem is you still have two hours to go after that point, so so really it's a matter of how long you can hold on for. But really, I'm glad I watched it. Um, but I'm not sure I'd ever watch it again after this. It's more of a one-time thing. If you want the short story, I basically recommend a rental for two reasons. One, because you're not really going to want to watch it again, so it's not really worth a buy. And for the other, you got to have breaks. You c I do not recommend watching this in a theater, because every hour or so, you'll want to take a break and go do something else for a little bit. Because otherwise, this film will beat you by the end. Which is such a shame, because there's great performances by all the adult actors in this. Um, and, you know, so, a lot of conflict and drama and stuff that does boost it up and bring you back in. The real main problem is once the uh, little shithead starts to beco starts becoming a really pretentious, douchebaggy teenager, and then continues like that all the way into college, that it starts to fall apart. Which is sad, because that's mostly what it focuses on for whatever reason. Uh, and and that, that, that's the main point, because I'm, I'm just disappointed with it. I'm sad that 
I'm sad that after all that, he, t he becomes just a complete a-hole, but for whatever reason, the film didn't seem to be wanting us to think of him as an a-hole. Instead, to be kind of enlightened or whatever. And, yeah, didn't like the ending. Didn't like the last hour, most of all. The second hour had, a, had um, some nice moments in it, but, yeah, the last hour just got eh, too much. After he graduates high school, it just just keeps on going. We gotta keep on going. But it's sad, because there really was a moment, like, at about an hour and a half in, where it felt like it could have easily ended. They were driving off in the car, um, and and it was like, we're moving on to a new step in our life, and we're, we're just gonna go out into the world. And I'm like, cool, cool, hour and a half to go. <laughs> and... Yeah, that that's the main thing. Like I said, um, my worry when I, during the before section, it's way too damn long. And yes, I understand. I understand what it took to do this. I mean, goddamn, that's twelve years of filming. I'm surprised they got any kind of plot out of it at all, or any kind of character at all. Um, so anything that is there, it's impressive, and the risk was great, and it should be congratulated for that. But, in all honesty, I did not enjoy this as much as Fury of Everything. I enjoyed it more than American Sniper, but that's because it was not boring at certain points. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, essentially, I think that all the super amounts of praise it's getting might be a little overdone. But definitely, praise, praise the work that was put into it. This was not a half-assed movie. I'm not going to say that. This, this took work. Just a little sad that we basically just watched the life story of a douchebag. I don't know, maybe you can see something poetic out of it, but... Ugh. Yeah, yeah, not, not a fan of that. But definitely, for what it made it worth it for me, just to see it at least that one time, was the first hour. That's when I was really getting into it. That's when we were meandering through, and it was seeming kind of like a coming-of-age story, and... Oh, I was really getting human elements out of that. That was great. I loved the first hour in that. So, watch it for that. But if, if you start to get bored like I am, like I did at about an hour and a half or something, yeah, I, I just stop watching. <laughs> turn, turn it off once you think it, it should end. Um, and there you go. It's, it, it ended for you, and it's good. It doesn't get any better as it goes on. So, now that I'm starting to ramble on a little bit, I'm Glenn Dyer, and you have been watching A Dyer Situation.